So um, we got a call um, of a, a man in crisis. Um, he was, all we knew at the time was that he was near the uh, I-285 um, and Donald Lee uh, ramp. Uh, we actually had another officer go out there about 10 minutes before that. Um, he said he didn't see anybody. And then I went out there 10 minutes later. I also didn't see anybody. And that's when I was uh, actually driving away from the location to advise dispatch that uh, I don't see any mail out there. Um, I was actually told by uh, somebody on scene that the mail had already left. And that's when I was flagged down by um, a guy. And he was like, hey, you know, that guy's still over at the, at the bridge. And I said, oh, I, didn't, I didn't see anybody, but let me get out the car and, you know, and I'll walk over there with you. Walked over to, uh, to the bridge or whatever. And the guy, he, he said, oh, he's down there. He's hanging off the, um, like the ramp or the, the sign or whatever. And I was like, oh, it's, it's kind of odd because it's a big uh, fence out that way. But when I shot my flashlight, there he was hanging. I uh, was hanging by both his arms, and uh, he was just, yeah, he looked like he was he was in distress for sure. He was definitely in distress. Um, as I'm speaking to him, I'm, tr I'm trying to I'm trying to talk to him and you know try to do what we taught in the academy. You know, try to try to get him talking and stuff like that. And then these two gentlemen that were, um, were already near that that sign. I'm not sure how they didn't see him, but they were they were there. And then they started talking, and then. I mean, very quickly, I noticed that he wasn't responding well to me, but he was responding well to these two gentlemen right here. Um, those guys were talking to him, and, um, and then he kept on he kept on saying, "Oh, I don't, I don't want the police here," you know, just just different things. And that's when I took a couple steps back, and then I was still still close enough where if they needed me, I could uh, step in. But um, the the gentleman who was speaking with him, he he, he did a, he did a great job, and he was talking to him, and that's when I took a few more steps back. Um, and then I could hear the, the gentleman who was hanging from the, the ramp. He was saying, oh, I don't, I don't like lights. I don't like lights. So, of course, because it's such a chaotic scene and everything, you're going to have fire and Grady. Everybody's coming to the scene. They're all having their lights and sirens. So my big thing first was to shut down the highway just in case uh, he was to fall or, you know, any lights that were bothering him, uh, it wouldn't affect him. And then uh, when fire was getting there and Grady, the buses were getting there, I was also letting them know, you know, turn off your lights. You know, he's, he's very sensitive to lights. And, um, yeah, and like I said, the gentleman, he talked to him for about 20 minutes and he did a great job. Uh, and eventually the uh, young man came up from, from the ramp. Okay. Okay. Um, so I guess what's going through your head as all of this But the civilians, I mean, the closest thing they we normally get to that is like CSI, like TV. Right, right. So what's going through your head when you So, I mean, um, before I did this, um, before I was a police officer, I've been here for about three years. I actually worked in psych. Um, so I did, uh, I worked in a psych hospital up in Michigan for about, uh, probably about two, two, three years out of college. Um, I studied criminal justice and also psychology as well. So I was very familiar with mental health and people in crisis. I've, I've, I've done it a million times in the psych hospital and also out here. But, um, you know, what's going through my head at the time is this guy's in, in crisis. Um, he's one slip away from possibly losing his life. So my whole focus was to keep him calm, keep him hanging on. And um, I also, I, I wanted fire to get down to the, to the highway. Possibly they could put like some type of inflatable down there just in case he was to fall. But uh, obviously we didn't get that far. But that was my, my whole my whole thing was what can I do to keep him calm, to keep him from slipping off into the highway, into the oncoming cars? Um, so I guess, you know, the outcome when he came back up, what do you think your experience as a, as a psych doctor in that capacity, do you think that helped the situation? I, I definitely think it helped the situation because um, we're going to have some uh, police officers, even uh, people who work in the psych field, they're gonna they, they get to a scene like that and they're gonna think, oh well, I have all the experience, I, I know what I'm doing. You know, it's just t these two random guys who are just standing in the middle of Donna Leo. I'm, I'm not gonna let them do what they need to do. But as professionals, especially in our profession, sometimes we gotta take that step back and see, like, okay, he's responding well to this citizen. Let me step back because at the end of the day, as police, we're here. It's, commu it's community policing. You know, we're you know, that that's how it should be. It should be the police are out here to help to protect and serve, and the citizens right now he's he's serving the community as well. And I'm assisting him just because I'm a police officer with a badge and a gun doesn't make me any more empowered than him. You know, he can help out the situation just like I could, and that's exactly what he did. He 
he seen the opportunity, he took, he stepped right in, and I took that step back, like, okay, he got it. He just, he's, a, he's a citizen, but I mean, he, he, can, he can do the same thing I could do it. You don't need a badge to save somebody's life. That's real. That's yeah, real. definitely. Um, so the last question, it's no secret, man. I feel like we both see this in our fields. Um, mm -hmm. Civilian and police relationships in the country right now isn't yeah. necessarily no. the best, but events like this where you guys come together to save a life instead of know you guys match up and somebody's dead what right i guess what would you tell people that would see this and would still kind of be cautious about interacting or even approaching law enforcement and, yeah and that's and that's the thing too like um, when i seen they put this video out I, I was i was proud and not just of myself or of just all the apd officers all the police officers across the country because i mean we we're, we're doing stuff like this every night like uh we, we, we have similar cases like this all, all the time and what people see mostly on social media and media is just us going out, we're, we're fighting people, we're arresting people, we're you know, beating people up, killing people, but that's not what our job does. Like, we don't, you know, the social media, they, they might make it look like that we take somebody to jail every day. We, we don't take people to jail. For the most part, we, we probably save more lives then we put people in jail, and that's on any any given night. I only can speak for Atlanta, but I'm sure it's the same way in any other major city. So, um, to answer your question, like, what I want people to see is we're here to protect and serve, and 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 we we all know that, but I think sometimes sometimes we get away from that. But we, I mean, we're here to serve the community, and that's that's what we did.